Hello, everybody. My name is Trollmaker. And I'm Rangru. And this is the 3v3 Tournament of Glorious Design. Hosted by PLF. Today we are doing the map Ostersund, one of my favourite maps in-game. And today we have SKD and Red Chieftain. On NATO side, we have Nero, Binz Rider, and Salamander, representing SKD. And for the pack, we have Fidel Castro, Ho Chi Minh, and Nikolai. I'm not even going to try and pronounce that last <laughs> name. It's Sosuka School or something along those names. Hmm. Yeah, he's... These guys using dictator names once again. This very weird names. I just feel like there's probably gonna be this big giant reveal at the end, like you know, aha! It was, you know, it was Tiga all along. Or... Uh -huh. <laughs> well, maybe probably... it was me. It, you didn't expect it, but it was actually Troublemaker mm -hmm. and Rengru. Yep, and I was playing on two computers. Yeah, that's right, as two of me and one of Troublemaker. Yeah, he's really good and I'm really bad, so he can play two computers. <laughs> yep. And we do have an, another NATO Unpacked engagement today. I think we're going to start eating our own red. Keep saying that oh, there's got to be a NATO or NATO match somewhere down the line, but we haven't seen it yet. Such a departure from ESL. Yeah, well, and uh, there's also the kind of figuring out the metagame. I mean, there's mm -hmm. not a lot of good pack players out there, period. Yeah. There wasn't, before the patch, there wasn't a lot of pack players when pack were strong. Mm -hmm. uh, so they're they're still kind of getting figured out. And I think these, these red chieftain guys have just really got got a handle on, mm -hmm. on pack. Bring out a lot of units at the start. Quite a few um, MI2s from Fidel Castro. Salamander again, a few Huries as well. And uh, yeah, on the southern flank... Doesn't seem like Nero's buying too much at the start. I think he's just going to try and defend Juliet, to be honest. He's got a lot of, uh, well, not even a lot, just a few AT, a lot of AA. Mm -hmm. Might try and go for an air war. Which... Yeah. I don't know about it. <laughs> I, I, that, that, that area seems like you want to get a giant bulk of forces mm -hmm. and move forward, grab the India location, and take it. Um, mm hmm. I think the northern flank, or sorry, the whoever takes Foxtrot and uh, secures the middle area, should be the air dominant one. Yeah, like there's usually three paths that you can go down. If we look at Delta, if you go Delta, you should move up into Charlie Bravo, and you have the Foxtrot line. If you capture Foxtrot in that middle town, you should really be a supporting player, helping out both sides. And then you have the Kilo. The Gulf Line, which is this run long slug fest, which could be its own little one v run map, I have to say. The Gulf and Kilo area, but the match has started. Holy crap! Holy NATO air spam, Batman. Yes, and uh, here comes a few MIGs from uh, the pack players. Mm -hmm. There was Fat Phantom getting shot down. Rod Rizal's going into intercept. Run does get shot down in the process. Freedom fighters. Why is he using freedom fighters to fight? They only have cannons. Hmm. Yeah. And mopped up by packed air forces. Just too many. Uh, Just... Like, the Freedom Fighter is good because it's bulky mm -hmm. and it can be used later on in the game for picking up tanks and infantry and all mm -hmm. that stuff, but it's not a lead on fighter. You, do, you, yeah. you, you want something that can actually do the damage. Mm hmm. Chieftain or Nikolai down south. He is doing some sneaky business with his uh, MI 24 infantry. Oh, one does get shot down. And he's trying to fly him round the flank. He might. I think he's going to go straight to Kilo. Oh god, he he has like a home run to Kilo. And yeah. Just a... nothing. Oh. All the vehicles are moving forward, uh, mm -hmm. facing off against Nikolai's ridiculous army of cavalry tanks. Yeah, an infantry. I I'm I'm just looking at his helicopter. I think it might. What is he going to try and spawn camp Kilo? I think that's what he's going to try and do. And, oh god, Nikolai moving in through the northern part of Juliet. I mean, uh... <laughs> and, uh this is going to be a good lesson for Oh god. Map. Ho Chi Minh moving right into Foxtrot as well. This helicopter assault. Wow. <laughs> oh. 
the, yep. the middle is just completely open. Mm -hmm. uh, if that helicopter assault doesn't work, there's an army of Urals just south of it coming mm -hmm. in full of infantry, and there's literally only one Zippo. That's it. Mm -hmm. And a Cobra. <laughs> MI-24, if he can just land his infantry to try and take out that... Can he get the CV in Kilo? It's right there. Can he see it? Can he... I think he didn't see it, actually. It's in that little red line. Oh, no, now he's moving it. Yeah, if if they would have gotten rid of Kilo, that would have just been the end of the match. Mm -hmm. That's a reinforcement point in the south. That means the south belongs to red. Yeah, and, you can eat, and the only other reinforcement point is in Delta. So... You you just have to camp at road going between Delta and Kilo and cut off and you got it. I mean things are only mostly bad right now for NATO. Uh, on the top they have completely taken out Charlie and Bravo, and that does open them up to playing mm -hmm. Ring Around the Rosie. Uh, but right now that's not a winning strategy for them. They've lost Fox Rob, mm -hmm. They've lost um, that uh, uh, J. What's that now? Juliet. Forgot yeah. my alphabet for a second there. Hey, he moved uh, his uh, tank CV from Julie. He's using a, a French tank CV. Okay. Yeah, I. Just a little suspect. It's only got six front armor. It does have the 10 strength, which means it can take some hits from mortars and bombs, yeah. but. It still does. I think he's playing an old French tank, that's probably why. Is he? No, no, no. He's using RBS. Is he playing mixed NATO? Yeah, th this was actually a strategic choice to pick this yeah. uh, thing. Interesting choice. It does have the auto cannon, though. So it does have a little bit more attack power compared to most tanks. Still, it's just oddity. An absolute oddity. Because you usually don't get French tanks for their armor. You have to admit, on the northern side, Zin Binge Rider did a very good job, and he's kind of cooping up for the other team's mistakes. Moving up all the way into Alpha, trying to, you know, whole team man is going to be napalming them to Kingdom Come. A oh, great napalm, yeah, absolute great napalm. And whether they get Alpha or not, going to decide whether they can come back or not. Mm hmm. Because that's, they're in that position right yeah. now, and uh, they're playing. Kind of like the what used to be the the, the last strategy of European escalation. That is, they're playing the reinforcement points. They're trying to move up and just push in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Alpha is usually a pretty hard point to attack from that angle because it's a very small choke point of just one long road, and you can easily camp the yeah, choke point. So I don't think it's a soap will go too well for Salamander and Binge Rider. And uh, yeah, it's just Ho Chi Minh and Nikolai moving up into Kilo. Nero getting up some reinforcements now. Hey, these guys are just really, really good. They've mm -hmm. been. Uh, the fact that they're playing packed feels like they're showing off, but more and more I see these guys, it just seems like they have a really good handle on the game. They really yeah. do understand how the pack are played. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Pact really benefits, I have to say, from using a lot of these more cheapy units, like those interceptors are usually pretty cheap, around uh, 60 to 90 point uh, area. And these Sapperies, and yeah, there's lots of good, cheap, brown designed units. And one of the big things about the cheap units is that they, uh, they work really well in uh, lower income games, mm -hmm. and that's basically how they've been playing. They've been winning very quickly. Mm -hmm. Not a single hour long match for these guys. Every single one's been, say, 22, 23 minutes yeah. every time. Where money doesn't accumulate too much, or you have like a whole force of four Leopard 2A4s of 10 Flat Pan just behind it. Because good luck trying to move up into the air. It does seem like it also had to clear up, yeah, uh, flanks now. Nero moving up his AMX CV, probably into Foxtrot. Using up most of its ammo. It's been an incredible good fight. He's going to try and fall back into Foxtrot. There's a, a Topaz Command Armor coming up for Fidel Castro. They're trying to take the Juliet points. So, mm -hmm. And uh, looks like he should... There's not a lot defending there. It's like a Factoria with no ammo and a bunch of model Jokies, mm -hmm. but he should be able to hold it for a little bit. 
Yep, he also has the reinforcement point in India, so he can keep on bringing reinforcements, and as I say before, garrison and infantry are a pain in the ass to get out once they are dug in. Because they're even resistant to the napalm. Mm-hmm. They just have infantry everywhere. Like, Foxtrot is going to be pretty hellish to clear out. There's 20, oh, sorry, there's 15 commandoses with those RPGs. There's mm -hmm. another five with RPGs, the sappers with their napalm, and there's two squads of anti-air units. Yeah, for shooting down any of those nasty cobras that do try to poke their head over. And then Nero just moving up a little bit. And they have uh, Spec Ops teams in Delta feeding every, like ri pretty ridiculous amounts of information. There's mm -hmm. about half the units they were reported and... Oh, yeah. It's just <laughs> not spotted by Blue right, or by the NATO players right now. <laughs> I do like how he has his Grizzly completely surrounded by a bunch of AMX-13 bodyguards. Completely flanking all of his sides. <laughs> And the tank as well, and recon guys. He really doesn't want that to either be napalmed or bombed, which is good because you don't want the Delta Point to be uh, destroyed like that. Especially when you are losing already pretty badly. Castro moving up a Salamandra, am I too? I don't think it's going to go down to Amex's, yeah. Doing, yeah, namesake. It should be, but they're, they're luckily kind of a cheaper helicopter. And... Mm hmm. Kind of just the, the, the intel grab there. They did figure out uh, what's in the back area there. Yep. And knowing what the enemy has is always very good. There's a little bit of micro happening with the SC-24 in the middle. Uh, uh, what's he going for here? Okay, he was taking pot shots at a mm -hmm. random squad there. There's a lot of really cool things you can do with, with the aircraft, just kind of zigging them around the map. Yeah, indeed, indeed. I'd like to know how the middle town, the slap bang middle town, NATO didn't rush to defend it. That is such an important town to hold, because from that town, you can see you have roads literally leading to every single capture point in a relatively good distance. I, I just wonder what their reasoning was for not holding it, because Pact managed to take advantage of that and move up into Foxtrot relatively easily. It's like the biggest lesson that anyone who, who is learning to play the game mm -hmm. wants to play the game uh play a lot of games because i mean even with pubs mm -hmm. you'll learn all of your mistakes all at once mm -hmm. and especially watching games especially on mine and troublemakers channel <laughs> well less mine i'm actually quite terrible at this game quite quite terrible yep uh, my first day back actually from uh vacation I played up against Hitman, and uh, he decided to helicopter all in me. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like something he would do. He does that to me an awful lot. Simultaneously, I spawned no unit, so it was a very easy win. <laughs> was it a 1v1? Uh, no, it was like a 3v3, but that one helicopter all in pretty much lost the entire match for our entire team. Oh. Well, this was a very, very quick match. Yeah, this is quite, quite fast. Just the complete blitzkrieg off the bat from Red just steals in the deal in the first five minutes, to be honest. Yeah, well, the air losses for NATO are just brutal. Yeah. They're using a lot of bombers. They don't have a lot of air superiority fighters. They don't have those nice ones. Like, I think they might... No, they don't have any Nighthawks, I'm pretty sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think none of them are playing pure USA. I think they're all playing some sort of mixed deck. Yeah. So, no Nighthawks. And, like, that's one of the things with the team play, like, uh, for Pact less, because Pact don't have good minor nations. No, compared to USSR. USSR is usually statistically better. But, like, there, there, there might be, you know, two people playing a Soviet deck and then mm -hmm. one playing the mixed Soviet. Or maybe even two playing mixed Soviet now, just because of how good like cheap air units are yeah because those makes basically every single mig that starts from a 19 to a 23 is really good at taking out enemy aircraft i mean with with uh, nato it's a little more complicated mm -hmm. like you need to have someone playing like a, a, a america deck someone playing a, mm -hmm. 
French deck sometimes, but not always. A British deck or UK deck works out pretty well mm -hmm. if you don't have a French deck. But it has to be cohesive to your strategy, and uh, I think the fact that he was playing a mixed deck on defense, I, I mean, a, a defensive position just screams UK to me. Mm -hmm. UK is very good at just sitting down somewhere and watching the enemies come back. We're having a very nice cup of tea while nothing goes on. Yes, uh Wish I had Tim Hortons. <laughs> but unfortunately, on this merry day... No Timmy's for you. No Tim's. They closed down all the grocery stores, mm -hmm. all the Tim Hortons's. McDonald's is open, but I don't like their tea. Or coffee. I heard they had pretty good coffee at McDonald's. Like, it's not too bad compared to Tim Hortons, but it isn't Tim Hortons. Well, it's just like how Starbucks has ridiculously good coffee. Mm -hmm. But I'll never drink it. Because <laughs> it's not Tim Hortons. It's not. It's not Loyal to the brand. <laughs> Understandable. Yeah, I. Uh, there, just. Uh, there's a lot of dumbfounded stuff for me. It's hard to really talk about it. Like, the fact that they've gotten so many of these Spec Ops teams out. I mean, at Kilo, mm -hmm. there's a Spec Ops team spotted a command, and here comes a single helicopter to wipe it out. Like, how could that have happened? How oh. could they have let that happen? Yeah, I think MI-24 is going to get that, like, uh, East West German. Yeah, that's the West German Jeep, yeah. And it's reversing really fast. Harry is coming in to kill MI-24. The game will probably end before this thing dies, but mm -hmm. it's just one of those, like, you know, scratch your head, like... The Spetsnaz might snipe it. How do they I not have a single infantry in the entire wooded area? Oh god, Rose, I think the Spetsnaz might like it. Oh god, if they do it, I'll be very happy. Oh, I think you might all be. Oh, and Leopard 2 had to ruin my fun. Yeah. <laughs> it would have been inconsequential regardless. I yeah. Mean, the match is effectively over. already decided. That, that middle is what ruined them. Mm hmm. They lost the middle road network, they lost Foxtrot very, very fast. And that just let them. Um... To get completely flanked and attacked by all angles. You know, they did do a very good job at northern flank, and I have to give them that. They completely blitzkrieged yet very well. And they're in a stalemate at the moment, but they have both northern sectors, which is always a good accomplishment. Yeah, they just kind of had the, like, that's a good opener, but they, they need to find some way of still being able to do that while mm -hmm. keeping... While having a long-term strategy of securing middle. Yeah, and a southern flank as well, because, you know, Juliet being entirely captured. And I first think Nikolai is just moving up for the lows, his mods directly into the open try get CV. And their opener they did. It, it wasn't an all-in. It was just like a standard good play, and... Like, unfortunately, this uh, SKD team just didn't have... Mm -hmm. You know, a standard good opener to match it with. The oh, actually selling the game from points at the moment. I what did they capture to do yet? Foxtrot, and then they have the two top bases. That's oh. basically, you know, what they should have been doing mm -hmm. all along. Kind of prolong the game awkwardly. I mean, there's only two point four points left. That's mm -hmm. literally six seconds of a two point base bleed. That'd be it. But yeah. Um, Maybe it might come back. Miracles do happen. Yeah, don't don't make me laugh too hard. <laughs> you know it hurts for me to laugh. I, I know. I I I'm sorry. I'm Canadian. Canadians are not allowed to laugh. We just are, we just apologize a lot. Yeah. I'm I'm sorry for your sorriness. <laughs> yes, sorry. Have you seen Anchorman yet? Uh, no, I have not seen that movie yet. I'm I'm wanting to see it, but I just never got around to it. So uh, there's a part where they have all the the networks mm -hmm. and all around the world. So there's like the the BBC shows up and uh, Sports Network and and the Canadian uh, Canadian Broadcasting Corporation shows mm -hmm. up. They're all, it's like led by Jim Carrey. <laughs> Shit, you not led by Jim Carrey, and um, the, everyone there is wearing like hockey jerseys and like uh, Jim Carrey's the only one who's not. He's like a mm -hmm. super polished Canadian broadcaster. Yeah, like the seventies. And uh, every time they, they say something threatening, it's like, you know, and we're going to beat the, the living snot out of you. 
and they'll tilt their head like a Canadian and say, mm -hmm. sorry. <laughs> Very stereotypical. And Red Chieftain does manage to secure the victory in Finally, 16 yes. minutes, 59 seconds. Very good match there from him. They did, they did not get the KD victory in terms of kills, but they just managed to gain so much ground early on, which caused them to win. It's actually uh, weird, because, and the reason why they had such severe losses is because they were using almost entirely cheap, super effective rushing units to get those, mm -hmm. those territories. And, like, yeah, they sacrificed 2,000 points worth of units, but because they had so many more cheap units to throw out, they just it just never appeared like they were weak. Mm -hmm. They just had so much units housed in the field all the time because they're a lot more cheaper than their NATO equivalents. That's what managed to secure them the victory. And, uh, yeah, that's all we have time for. I'm Rangroot. And I'm Troublemaker. Take it easy.